Hello everyone, I'm Jing Wei from Simple Debate Project. In this video, I will talk about low frequency data recovery using deep learning prediction. I hope you can enjoy it. This is me, a 30 year PhD student from China University of Pretoria, and my supervisor is Professor Hui Do. Now I'm a visiting student in National University of Singapore, and my current supervisor is Elita. Here, I also want to thank Arthur for giving constructive comments on this video and pointing out the future study direction. I will introduce this topic by the following three parts. First, I want to talk about the low frequency seismic data. Geophysics in the seismic exploration industry have long recognized the potential benefits of extending the bandwidth of seismic measurements. The frequency generated by a seismic shot turn much further through the surface than do higher frequencies. Thus, the amount of power available in the low end of seismic spectrum is especially important for deep exploration targets. The land vibrator and the marine air gun areas have a capacity to produce scan to out power and low frequencies. Unfortunately, in most acquisition environments, the power level of noise increase exponentially and frequency decrease, resulting in a low signal to noise ratio and low frequencies. Also, the low frequencies play a critical role in the inversion process. For example, the following from inversion is high dependent on initial model. If the seismic data lacks the enough low frequency component in case of poor initial model, far away from inverter cannot build a reliable model parameters. The filter using in data process can also destroy the low frequency seismic data, especially for high pass filter application to remove in the subsurface waves. The geophysicists are encouraged to reconsider the possibility of intending the use for seismic bandwidth to lower frequencies. This can lead to better performance of existing process methods and more accurate inversion. Machine learning is a popular method in the recent years. It has been widely used in seismic exploration from data processing to data integration, based on learning method, we try to treat a network to make relationship between the high and the low frequency seismic data. Then we apply the trained network to other low frequency seismic data recovery. There are two uh, motivations. One is due to the local similarity between the high frequency and the low frequency. We prefer to use data patches in training and the testing process. The other is training the basic elements of the short gathers helps to generalization ability of the trade network. Now let's go through the basic idea of deep learning. This picture shows the deep learning architecture model, which consists by two sections. One is the training process and the other is application process. In the training process, we feed the information and the data to the network. There is a network to make a prediction. After we compare the predicted data to the real data, we perform backward propagation to adjust the weights and the bias to update the network. We repeat the process until the predicted data are close to the real data. The final network are our trader network. After operating the trader network, we can use it to other data prediction.
then the aims of our work are coming. First, we try to perform data driver loop frequency recovery workflow based on the deep learning method. The second is that we also want to introduce some data processing in theories and training strategies. The last one is we try to recover more accurate and low frequency seismic data for seismic exploration. The following part is a theory and the key steps. The basic concept of this method is building or seeing for mapping seismic data from high to low frequency can be expressed as this, where L stands for the low frequency data, H denotes the high frequency data, theta is the parameter of the network. During the CNN training, we aim to build a relationship between the high and the low frequency data by solving the following mean squares of optimization problem. We update the parameter of network by using add delta gradient adjustment method. This slide shows the workflow of low frequency seismic data recovery using neural network. We perform the method of short gathers. First we apply the data pre-processing to, to obtain the normalization short gathers. Then filter the data into high and low frequency, prepare the input of network by dividing the short gather into a series of high and low frequency data patches. After training the network, we use it for other low frequency data prediction. That is, we input the high frequency uh, data patches into the trained network and uh, its output is predict the low frequency data patches. Finally, apply the inverse pre-processing and data size reshaping to produce a predict low frequency short gathers. Now let's observe the what data processing involved in this workflow. Specifically, they are data down sampling and regain data normalization, data patterning, and so on. The inverse processing, the inverse pre-processing is the inverse operation of this processing. This slide displays the architecture of network. It includes an input layer, 12 convolutional layer, an active function, and a output layer. The size of input data patches is 64 multiply 64, 32 convolutional kernels with a fixed size of 9 times 9 and are employed to capture the feature map in the each layer. The rectified linear unit is used in all layers except the last output layer where the touch function is employed to enter the data into negative one to positive one. Data normalization is introduced in some layers to speed up the convergence. The next section is numerical examples. Uh, these two figures display the mammoth model and the overstruct model. From the two models, we see that they have different model size and they were at different structures. This slide shows the AGC process. First, we use a 13 hertz Gaussian function as a wave laser to generate the four frequency data. Then we filter the data into high and low frequency data. As we know, in short gathers, direct waves have the main energy of data. If we directly feed the data to network, we cannot make a successful weak reflection predictions. So we need to do energy gain. This is energy measured from seismic data. These two are the four and low frequency data after using a GC.
This is some of input and output patch pairs. The top two are some high frequency patches. The mid two are low frequency data patches. The bottom is the features of one patch pair in different convolution layers. We note that with the increase of convolution layer number, the convolution operation gradually captures the low frequency information. In this example, we generate a total of 30 short gathers, and half of them are used for training, the rest are used for testing in the training process. They are about 2300 patch pairs used to treat the network with 30 epochs. This slide shows the result from the training data. The two pictures show the predicted result before and after using inverse AGC. We notice that for both of them, the predicted predict data match well with true low break data. The total of 20 shots have an average relative errors of 8.09%. This shows the training process can match such relative successfully. We also observed its performance or test data. We noted that for the testing data, it is can be still make a successful prediction and the average the relative errors are 14.02%. For further comparison, we plot the amplitude spectrum and a section of trees of shots to the in previous slide. We observed that the predict low frequency information match well with the true low frequency information very well in both frequency and time domains. After training our mammoth model, model, we apply the treatment network to overstruct the model to test its generalization ability. They are 38 shots are involved in the network predictions. This slide shows two shots from them. Comparing with the true low frequency, the predict was a highly constant, especially for reflections. The setting eight shot average the relative errors are eight point seven three percent. We also observed their amplitude spectrum and the local sections of trees. The same conclusions are drawn. In order to illustrate the effectiveness of the local data uh, driver training process, we compare the trace data input to local patch data input in this slide. From the left to right, they are result predicted using trace input. Trace data with energy balanced operation as input. The data driver patch data input and the true low frequency data. From this test, we notice that the trace input with data energy balanced operation can successfully predict the low frequency in the same models. When we use the trait network to other model, the predict low frequency data lose the horizontal continuity. However, the, the data driver low frequency predicted method can recover much more accurate results. The last section is the conclusion. There are three points. The first one is the missing low frequency data can be recovered by deep neural network. The second one is the energy balanced strategy can well serve the energy attenuation and weak reflection in the training process. 
the last port is the basic patch data, which not only allow us to use small size filter to speed up the training process, but also strengthen the predictability of the network. That's the end of my representation. If you are interested in this topic, please connect me with more detailed information. Any comments or suggestions are welcome. Thanks for your watching. Bye bye.